What's up, Internet? It's me, your boy, uh, Quarantine Haircut, with another tier list because you guys keep asking for these. Now, the in strike one is a, an insurmountable task, but we'll get to it eventually. Um, in the meantime, let's take a look and deep dive into Nerf's largest compensators. I mean, uh, calibers uh, over here in the mega tier lists. Let's kick off our tier list by talking about the blaster that almost ended it before it even began, the major flop that was the Mega Centurion. Cosplayers love it. Uh, we love to rib on it. It is the only clip system blaster in the mega range, and with good reason, the clip system was fickle, it was proprietary, it was expensive. Uh, it's great once painted up. It looks like a mega high caliber sci-fi sniper rifle, but uh, with what was ultimately a very janky uh, plunger system, uh, it just wicked a ton of power out of its massive barrel prime and plunger volume. It was a complete disaster of a waste of space in regards to like something like, say, the long shot, which makes use of its large size to uh, deliver actual performance in a direct plunger capacity. This guy really neglected its real estate and unfortunately never even came close to its centurion level range claims of we're going to fling high caliber ammo downrange about 100 feet. Uh, so because it's not very good, uh, it should be in F tier for failure. However, uh, because of its cosplay potential, it bumps up to E tier, and because it somehow managed to start the Mega Line, which ultimately has some merits and is pretty cool, we're going to go ahead and throw the Centurion right here in D tier. It's not quite a passing grade, but it uh, it doesn't go to remedial studies either. Next up to bat is the Mega Magnus. Now, the Mega Magnus is not bad. The Mega Magnus is a three-shot internal clip pistol that actually delivered pretty decent performance, almost on par with the Centurion despite being way way smaller and way way less expensive this was a really cool pistol that you could rebarrel for elites if you wanted to do something really spicy with it or uh you could undersling it for integrations i did a variety of those myself i thought that it was a great mega shield buster add-on that just so happened to have internal storage capabilities and wound up being a pretty mean sidearm in addition to integration fodder coincidentally you would never want to put one on a centurion but they made a mean addition to a long shot a la the night period that i put together because of that i think that this one's a tier it's not exceptional in any way, but it definitely like served to breathe some life into Mega and say that this ammo wasn't just a gimmick. Also coming in in 2014 was the Mega Thunderbow, and this is easily like my favorite Mega Blaster of all time. It's hard to appreciate now just how much better its performance was than its predecessors, but this was the first Mega Blaster that could actually reach those 100 foot ranges, and it did a pretty mean job, particularly with a few little modifications, and you kind of had to get a feel for where to release the, uh, the string action um, but I really, really, really liked this blaster. It also fulfilled a lot of my personal Legolas fantasies, and it had just a really sci-fi kind of almost Hawkeye and Avengers sort of cyberbow feel. Like, it was really cool, very unique, and did something really special with the ammo. In addition to having an onboard capacity, it came in at only 40 United States dollars, which was pretty affordable compared to the Centurion, given that it performed so much better. Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and put it in S tier. There's a little bit of personal bias for that, but uh, you guys can always make your own list and fight about it later. Next up is the blaster that I almost called the Heracles intrinsically. This guy got you into Mega firing for only eight bucks the year following the Thunderbow, and it wasn't that bad. It was a great modification platform. It could shoot rival rounds. It could shoot neck down elites. Like, you could even shoot micro darts out of it. It was effectively just a big old Mega Jolt, but there's nothing wrong with a big old Mega Jolt. Boring as it may be, this guy comes in at B tier because for $8, you could fling high caliber ammo just about as well as a Magnus, if not a little bit better in some circumstances. So while the Cyclone Shock did not absolutely break pistol rounds like I originally speculated, it did come pretty close. It was a massive plunger tube and an auto-retracting, auto-rotating uh, revolver to jour, and I really, really dug this thing. My modified version for micro darts came pretty close to shooting about as hard as a neck down uh, night finder, but uh, ultimately NIC wars at this point were kind of slowing down as we were getting way more into super stock as a hobby, and so it never really got to be the game buster that I thought it would be, but it still is a mean pistol. It does a lot of really cool stuff. It's very powerful. It's very easy to modify. It's super affordable coming in at 20 bucks, and because of that, I think that it should be S tier, but I'm going to pull a little bit of my revolver love away from it and leave it in A tier. I think that that's a fair slot. Now, the Roto Fury would probably rank a little bit higher on my list if it didn't come out in such close proximity to the Cyclone Shock. The fact of the matter is, at $35, it didn't make sense to pay almost twice as much money for a revolver that was pump action uh, and had no integrated stock. Like, it, uh, it's okay. It's a pump action sort of shotgun-esque tactical drum sort of thing. 
It, it's got some interesting aesthetic choices going on. It's borrowing very heavily from certain real steel shotgun drum uh, sort of magazine type things. But uh, ultimately, I didn't think that this one was super duper compelling. I didn't think that it was worth modifying in a, an ultra heavy fashion, although I'm positive that it would probably do okay if you necked it down. I'm going to put it exactly where I think it puts itself, which is it's a passing grade. Is it the top of the class? Absolutely not. But it's also not a bad blaster. It's just a pump action revolver integration type thing that happens to cost twice as much as the revolver that it's not that much better than. Next up comes the Hot Shock, and the Hot Shock honestly is just trying to be an inline big shock, and it's just not that compelling, not that exciting. I don't think that it was that much better in any sort of semblance of the word. It cost about the same amount of money and did about the same exact sort of thing, except its grip was honestly less comfortable, while the big shock was super chunky. This one was not chunky enough. So because of that, because it's a direct ripoff of a predecessor and does nothing compelling or special or innovative or new, it's going to go down here in, uh, in B tier. It's just not that great, guys. And unfortunately, guys, 2016 isn't getting that much better over here. We've got the Lightning Bow, which is a sin against industrial designers everywhere, I feel like. It's not comfortable. It's not full-sized. It takes everything that makes bows cool and shrinks it down into an ultimately incredibly disappointing package. Its performance isn't amazing. Its ergo is a complete lack, and not knowing where it's going to fire is also pretty bad as well. Ultimately, it would be pretty easy to regulate this one down into E-class as like a reject class, but uh, this one's worse than a reject. This is a full-on waste of your dollar dues. so it goes down into failure. Uh, hopefully, it's not in good company. And then 2016 surprises us with the Mega Mastodon. It's huge. It's one of the biggest, heaviest juggernaut class blasters that Hasbro's ever produced. And I'm going to remove my personal bias from the equation, which is to say that juggernaut class blasters don't really have a place in Nerf. Uh, if you're pitching blasters to children, they can't afford blasters this expensive, nor can they carry them. And if you're pitching blasters to adults, why not make them something nice or good or cool? Like, you have severely limited the number of people who can enjoy the Mastodon through its very design. Uh, however, if you were going to make a giant mega it shoots motorized blah 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 it actually does a pretty good job and with the exception of some upcoming 2020 blasters this is the only motorized blaster on our list because of that it's pretty unique i'm gonna put it in b tier i don't think it belongs in b tier but this list is for everybody this is for you internet and while I can forgive the Mega Mastodon for being a chunky boy, uh, one thing I can't forgive is just bad, lazy design. And that's exactly what the Double Breach brings us. For 25 absolutely wasted dollars, you get the Double Breach, which is a not ergonomic, poorly like lined up in terms of its reload capability. You have to open up a breach just to reload it. It only holds two at a time. Its performance was mediocre at best. It has no integrated stock attachment point. This is a bad blaster. Down with the lightning bow you go. Bad blaster. Bad shotguns. Come on, Hasbro. And yet, just as the tide ebbs and flows, 2017 wasn't done. They gave us one monster flop, but they also gave us an actual shotgun. Now, it doesn't look like a shotgun like the Double Breach. It's not claiming some sort of funky breach system, but they give us the Twin Shock. Now, the Twin Shock's merits as a high-caliber, slug-shooting, shotgun-style blaster uh, speak for themselves. It's got dual plungers. It fires two darts for every prime, and it's got a staggered trigger. Like, this thing is hot. It's basically the rough cut of Mega World, and the rough cut is a high bar to aspire to. I would put this one firmly in A class, but my little sister Addie thinks that this is possibly the most fun blaster she plays with. So, because of that, and uh, the, the Twin Shock owes a big old hashtag thanks, Addie, uh, for its tearless positioning, I'm going to put it up here in S class which at this point is looking like S-Class is just uh, a place that um, A-Class blasters that happen to be either my favorite or my siblings' favorites go. 2018 was not a good year for Mega in terms of how many offerings they put out. However, the one offering that they put out isn't that exciting or compelling either. So effectively, what if you slapped a smart AR on a big shock and charged twice as much? Well, that's exactly what the tri-break is. Now, it gives you some really funky kind of Hellboy-esque vibes and lets you pop down that flap and flip it back up to reload it, and it's got a, a really cool kind of cyber sort of aesthetic going on, but it's not exceptional. The shots get significantly weaker as you move through that AR system, as they are prone to do. That's only exacerbated by the amount of volume you need to move a dart that much bigger than an elite dart. That said, it's not a bad blaster. The gimmick is pretty cool. The ergo is so-so. So it's not D tier. It's not B tier. It goes right up there with the Roto Fury in the middle.
2018 gives us the release of the Mega Thunderhawk. Its only redeeming feature is that it happens to be the introduction of Mega Accustrike ammo. Is that ammo any good? Well, no, but it's significantly more accurate than Mega Darts, which were never that accurate to begin with. Had we already been making knockoff ammo that was much better? Absolutely. That said, if you were hardlined into buying only genuine Hasbro ammo, then uh, for whatever wallet murdering reason you have for that decision, this was a way for you to get better ammo, better performance out of a lot of your Mega Blasters. They might not shoot quite as far, but they might actually go in a straight line for the first time in five years. Uh, that said, that's where the nice things about the Thunderhawk end. The Thunderhawk's big claim to fame was that it was the largest, longest blaster of all time, which while is factually true, it's also completely false. See, they accomplished that not by adding effective or even cosmetically compelling things to the end of the Thunderhawk. Uh, they instead just slapped a big old extension onto the front of it, which was about as disappointing in Blaster World as I'm sure it would be in real life. So, um, this is not a good blaster. It combines Battle Scout style proprietary clip loading technology, which means that you can't use anything else with it along with this weird extendo deploy function, which we all know how we feel about the nerf deploy. That said, is it a complete failure? Yes. Yes, it is. No E-tier blasters. They're either really bad or okay, guys. So 2019 marks kind of a pretty big decline for Hasbro in general, but in particular, the Mega Line is not looking super duper hot. Uh, we get two blasters, both of which are spring powered, neither of which are particularly unique or good. We'll start off with the Bulldog, which is a three-shot smart AR and very similar to the tri-break of your. This one also has like a really funky sort of deployable feature wherein you flip the foregrip forward, the stock extends back, and the sights pop up. That said, like the stock is not particularly sturdy, the blaster is not quite big enough to be an SMG, neither is it when all of these features are collapsed comfortable enough to be a pistol. The extending stock cuts directly into the, where the meatus of your dominant hand would be, it makes it an absolute ergo nightmare. The best thing that you could do for it is snap it up into bitty bitty pieces, but at that point, why aren't you just using a tri-break? At least that gimmick is kind of cool. Because of that, although it's not a complete failure, this one goes into E tier. Now coming in at $40, we have the Megalodon, and nowhere near as cool as the dinosaurs of yore, this thing is a pretty terrible blaster to aim. That's because it's an oversized front-heavy drum-style springer, with a super weird crank style priming mechanism as opposed to a traditional slide. Why they went that direction, I have no idea. But it's okay, boys. It's okay. They give you slam fire. You know, the hyper accurate feature for crank style blasters. Whereas at least with an inline blaster or a pump grip blaster, slam fire makes sense as you have both hands in more or less the same linear fashion. When you're cranking the Megalodon, you're kind of jerking it in a weird sort of fashion such that you're not going to hit anything that you're aiming at. Uh, the use of like an iteratively bad feature and an overpriced, poorly ergo-designed blaster means that this one winds up with the rest of its 2019 kind down here in E-tier. Now I know what you're thinking, Drac, it looks so uneven. There's two in every category except for the failure. How did you do this? Did you plan ahead? And the answer is internet, no, I don't plan these out ahead. I have so much experience with all of these blasters from the moment that I got to review them early for you through using them at dozens and dozens of SCNC wars for both fun and videos that uh, I remember exactly how much fun or how little fun I had wielding each one. But now it's time to talk about one that we haven't gotten our hands on explicitly yet. Evening out the curve, we have the Moto Strike, which was debuted this year at 2020 and Apocalypse Aside should ship sometime before the end of the year. So let's talk about what it is. Well, it's a magazine fed mega style strife and the strife is pretty good. Uh, assuming that we can modify this either by making it a tighter crush or getting it to take other ammo or just really enjoying what it is, which is a very versatile mega flywheel blaster for the first time that's not relying on either being hyper expensive, crazy heavy, weirdly front heavy, or using a drum, I think that this one has some merit. So given it the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to throw it up there in S tier. S being for strife, I guess? That said, that's just my list. I almost always miss a blaster, so if I've missed one of your favorites, let me know in the comment section down below. If you dug this video, please throw it a thumbs up. The algorithm really seems to punish this long-form content, and it helps out the channel a whole, whole lot. If you'd like to see more tier lists on different nerf blasters, throw a comment down below and let me know what I should tackle next. Uh, the Alien Menace line would not take very long, and I know that you're hungry for Elite, but that's going to take me a day to film. That's a lot of blasters, boys. Uh, that said, um, there's Mega. Let me know. Do you agree with my picks? Do you disagree with my picks? 
And if you'd like to pick up some of these blasters with the affiliate link in the description box below, uh, that goes to support the channel, and I would really, really appreciate it, guys. So uh, those are the links. Comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Much love, Nerf on Drag. Out. <laughs>